This is the version 1.4 power supply and electronics box. We've made big improvements to these components since version 1.3 and version 1.2. Let's start with the power supply. The version 1.4 power supply is now 24 volt output and 6.25 amps. So it's still 150 watts total power, but the voltage has been doubled and that allows us uh, later down the line to supply the motors with more power and minimize voltage losses uh, throughout the cabling. The power supply is still an IP67 rated waterproof power supply and it can be mounted directly onto the raised bed using these mounting tabs here. It comes with a standard three prong US power plug and the output has a waterproof two pin screw together connector. That connector attaches to this modular cable which uh, will connect the power supply to the electronics box. So on this cable, we have the matching two pin connector here that we'll screw into here. And then a red two pin connector that attaches directly to the Farmduino. In previous versions, this whole cable was part of the power supply. They are one unit. Now we have this modularity and that allows for easier assembly because you can have the power supply disconnected while keeping the cable uh, inside the x-axis cable carrier. It also allows us to use the same power supply for both the Genesis and the Genesis XL devices and we can just change out the cable. So with the smaller devices you'll have a shorter cable and the, long, the XL devices will have a longer cable. The version 1.4 electronics box features an all new design with five push buttons mounted on the top and four LED indicators. The green LED indicator is used to indicate the sync status. The blue is connectivity to the internet and the web application. And the two white LEDs are user customizable and you can access uh, and control them via your sequences. The red push button is for emergency stop and the yellow orange push button is for unlock. The other three are user customizable to perform other actions and execute sequences and we'll put the full list of what you can do with that right below this video. The electronics box mounts onto the gantry column using the holes in these tabs here. It features a front cover that has a frosted look and a clear logo, and it comes fully pre-assembled. So we have mounted not only the lid onto the box and the latches onto the lid, but we have also mounted all the buttons and all the electronics boards in place. So what you'll get in your kit is this unit as I'm showing you here. The latches have been redesigned so that they do not collect rainwater, and you can easily open them up to access the contents inside. Inside the box are now three circuit boards. We have the Raspberry Pi 3, the next iteration of the Farmduino, and also a new board mounted on top of the Raspberry Pi's GPIO, which is the Raspberry Pi adapter board. And that breaks out the GPIO into connectors specific for the LEDs and the push buttons. So all of this will come pre-wired and including all these USB cables. So you don't have to mess with any of that. All you have to do is plug in all of the external components, the power supply, the motors and encoders, etc., into the Farmduino board. The new electronics box features mounting bosses with brass inserts specifically positioned for the Farmduino and the Raspberry Pi. So these boards are mounted directly into this white plastic box. There's no more need for an acrylic electronics mounting plate as an adapter piece. However, we also included six mounting bosses around the perimeter of the box. So if you want to add custom electronics into here, you can create your own uh, adapter plate and mount custom electronics as well. But everything that is needed for the stock farm bot already comes pre-mounted, so you don't have to worry about that. On the bottom of the box is the super gland, and this is used to uh, prevent dust and uh, bugs and moisture from entering the box, and it allows the various cables for the farm bot to be passed through. And so you can remove this, 
put in the cables according to the instructions in the documentation, and then reinsert this to provide as good of sealing as possible to prevent any contamination from getting inside the box here. So let's turn it on and I'll show you the push buttons. All right, so we have this electronics box plugged in and we have FarmBot OS installed. You can see that the green light and blue light are illuminated, indicating that it is synchronized with the web application and uh, connected to the internet and the web application. The red light is always illuminated and that's for the emergency stop button. If I press that, FarmBot is now an in an emergency stopped state and the yellow orange button is blinking and so I can press that to unlock the device. These three here are user customizable. You can see that when I press them in, there's a little bit of feedback with the light so you know that it's being activated. This particular button has been set to perform the sync action. So when I press it, the green light here briefly flashes as the FarmBot syncs with the web application. And that is the version 1.4 electronics box.